if you are looking for a nice and easy way to add context around your Unreal Engine projects where you have a building and you want some buildings, streets, trees around your building, something like this. So this is after and this is before. So you can see the difference. This is really easy to do thanks to Twinmotion. So all you need to do is to open your Epic Games Launcher and go to Twinmotion tab. If you have Twinmotion, perfect. If you don't, install it and then just click on launch. What you need to do is to start a new scene, just like we do in Blender where we delete the default cube. Here we need to delete the starting base. Get out of here. The next thing we want to do is to click on populate, then go to urban and search for a location or an address that you want to download as context to place around your project. So let's say I want to search for beautiful New York. Actually, Big Apple, you can see this here. Let's find the place. So when you search, you can now select a location. You can zoom in, you can zoom out and set a location. Now be careful, don't zoom out too much because that will take ages to download and generate. Let's say this is here is very nice. I like it. Click now on download and place and we can wait a little. Once it finishes downloading and generating the streets and the trees, you can look around to see what we have and we can fly around. So if you are new to Twinmotion, I will release a new lesson soon where we dive deep into the basics of Twinmotion. And now check this out, it's just beautiful to have all of this with just one click. Now, let's say you want this in Unreal Engine, why not? Let's send it to Unreal. So what we need to do is to go to File, then we want to go to export to DataMath file and let's click on standard. Here it will ask us to locate our root folder of our Unreal Engine project. So if you try to export this somewhere and click on name to give it a name, click on save, it will tell us, hey, select your Unreal Engine project. And to easily locate your Unreal Engine project, all you need to do is to open your Unreal Engine project, press Ctrl space to bring the content browser, then go to any of these folders, right click and click on show in Explorer. Now this will open our content folder for us. You can go one step back and now we can open Twinmotion again, click on file, click on export and let's copy the location and click here. Well, basically I have a plugin or a Windows thingy called Listari where I have window active. Let's say this window and I click here. Here's another tip. It will make that folder for you without copying this Ctrl C and Ctrl V. I'm just too lazy. Anyway, let's select the root folder and let's call this NYC Big Apple and let's click on save. So this will also take from few seconds to Slightly more than a few seconds, depending on the scale of the project. So let's also go get some water because you gotta stay hydrated. Project is exported now. Let's go to Unreal Engine. So here's our Unreal Engine project. Now to import this, you need to have DataFMath plugin enabled. You can do that from the plugins and here search for DataFMath and you will find DataFMath importer. This should be enabled by default if you have your project created using the architecture template. Now go to add menu, go to DataFMath, go to file import and select your DataFMath file. So again, here I have another folder. What I'm going to do is to select my folder here, go back and done. NYC, big apple, open and let's select our folder. So for testing purposes, I have a folder called test. I know it's such a creative name. I'm going to select the folder called DataFMath and I'm going to click on OK. Geometry, yes. Material and textures, yes. Click on import. And let's give this a few seconds. It will import and it will generate some mesh cards. So let's give it a few seconds as well. You will see the twin motion terrain and the floor. Maybe before exporting, you can delete these from here. So the starting ground and the starting landscape, you can select both and delete. So we can have just the city. And here you can see we have the context and under it, we have a couple of folders, roads, buildings, trees, areas, and the ground and we will have the same here in Unreal Engine. So let me select the landscape and the ground. So these are now static meshes, delete them as well. And let me click on yes. You will see that we have the ground and under it here. So NYC, Big Apple, this is the DataFMath scene file. I'm going to hold shift and click on this arrow to collapse what I have here. Then 
non-shift, open this, you can see we have the same structure, context, areas, buildings, ground, roads, and trees. Now here, now here I have the number two, that's because I already downloaded and imported something in the past, which is earlier, where we have context and the same structure, which is very nice and really super organized. So let me hide this so we can focus only on this part of the city to talk about one little final problem. Here, you're going to notice that all the trees have invalid light map settings, and the easiest way to deal with this is to simply restart the engine. You can fix this from the static mesh editor. As you can see here, they look just fine. However, I will restart the engine. Now, I'm going to press Ctrl Shift S to save everything, and I will restart the engine, so... All right, so now the engine is opening. And by the way, what you saw earlier, AC Interactive, is my template, my Unreal Engine template, and a course where I teach Blueprint in detail on how you can create your own Blueprint systems for your architectural projects. If you want to check it out, check out the link in the description. It's a very nice course. Now, I'm going to select the demonstration map where I was working. So let's go to Maps, Demonstration, to see the trees. Are they looking good? And spoiler alert, they will look just good. So here, let me hide this. And as you can see here, the trees are looking very, very nice. It's really nice what you can do with Twinmotion and Unreal Engine. They are my favorite combination now. As you can see here, with the beautiful lighting of Lumen, we have now the buildings around. And here we have our building. So if you select the Data of Math actor here, you can actually move the city around your building, the context. I can select it, move it to a nice place like so. And I can rotate the Data of Math actor around my building so I can preserve my building without editing it too much, like so. And to be honest, I actually love this new environment instead of my old environment that I had earlier, which is also nice, but I think I like the new environment more. So this was nice. This is here is even nicer, as you can see. There is one final thing we need to discuss, which is the level of detail of the trees. So notice this tree here is looking nice, but if I go far, it will change its level of detail, which is completely fine. So to work with this, what we need to do is to press Ctrl E on the tree here to open the static mesh editor. And this here have multiple level of details. So LOD zero, if we are very near. And here we have 377,000 triangles. Go now to LOD one, it's 194, so it's less. Now go more, less and less, up to LOD3 where we have only 36 triangles. This is uh, being calculated automatically, uh, LOD selection based on the screen size, which is kind of weird to be honest. So if you want to work with this, what you can do, you can set the current or the screen size for each LOD manually. Here, if you go to LOD picker, LOD, LOD auto, let's set this to LOD zero, for example. And now, all we can see all the time is LOD zero. And under LOD zero, we see current screen size. So this is an important number that we need to set. So for example, if I am here and I want to see LOD zero up to this point, then this number here is point, almost 0.5. So here under screen size, so LOD zero here, screen size, there is this screen size setting that we need to edit, but we cannot edit, and that's because we need to go to LOD settings and find auto compute LOD distances, and we need to disable this. Now, you can set this to a value we like, so let's say 0.5, for example, and now we need to switch to another LOD. So we need to set this manually, LOD one, let's set it to 0.3, for example. So you can play with these numbers and every time you edit any LOD, the LOD after it, it will be slightly smaller. So let's say I'm going to set this to 0.1 and 0.1 is the size of this object on our screen. So 0.1 is like nearly here, for example. And let's say this distance is fine for LOD 3 and it's 0 0.03. So I'm going to set this to 0 0.03. Now you can go back to LOD auto and you can now go near and far from your object and you can see the LOD here, it will change based on your distance, okay? Now you can save this and you can now go to the level 
and you can take a look. As you can see now, it's nice. And the more or the further we go, it will change the LOD until it's completely different. Here we have some other tree types. So this tree is not the same as this tree. So you need to do the same basically on the rest of the trees. That's a possibility. Now let's say you have another possibility where you want to replace the trees. So now we have three types of trees, which is fine. So you can press Ctrl E on each tree and edit the LOD. That's it. But let's say for all assets that are using this tree, I want to replace all of them. That's easy. Click on the asset here, right click and go to where we have asset actions, select actors using this asset, and this will select all actors in the level using this asset, then click on this asset here, Control B to locate it, then Control Z to undo our selection, and here we should have the possibility to input our static mesh. Now, for some reason, there is another type of mesh selected where it's making it impossible to set the static mesh. So if I select just one mesh here, I can set the static mesh. So one way to work with this, as you can see here, I am isolating and unisolating things. These are my custom shortcuts. So I'm going to leave a link for you on how you can set your own custom shortcuts to set the visibility. So here, hide selected, show only selected, show all actors. Usually what I do, I select all similar actors and then I hide everything except for these actors and then select one static mesh and then press Ctrl Shift A to select only all static meshes that are within my view. And now I would replace that mesh with this tree. And as you can see now, it's being replaced. So now I unhide everything and here we have our environment with the trees and everything. So that's it for this lesson. I hope you found it useful. Let me know if you have any questions or you want to see some different type of lessons. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care.